This is the Exxon Broadcast Network, broadcasting worldwide on broadcast affiliates and satellite program providers, including CNN Broadcast Network, Sirius Satellite Network, Star Media, Good News Radio Network, Angel Broadcast Network, Wiki Broadcast Network, and WPBN-TV. For more information on the X-Zone Broadcast Network, visit us at www.xzbn.net. Welcome back, everyone. My name is Rob McConnell. This is the Exxon on the Talkstar Radio Network and the Exxon Broadcast Network, coming to you from our studios in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. Toll-free worldwide, 1-800-610-7035. My email address is xzone at xzoneradiotv.com. On MSN Messenger, xzoneradiotv at hotmail.com. And our website, www.xzoneradiotv.com. My guest this hour is Cece the Huntress, as she is known as. Actually, Cece Carroll is our guest. She's also known as the Queen of the Paranormal, the Mistress of the Unknown, the New Queen of Darkness, and the sexiest ghost hunter on the planet. Hmm. Cece Carroll is a paranormal huntress, as she uses everything she has in her arsenal, spiritually to scientific, that is, to track, hunt spirits, and heal them. And uh, her comparison to Elvira as the new Queen of Darkness makes her smile. In Cece's own words, and this is a quote, There's only one Elvira. She is the sexiest woman I've ever seen. To be compared uh, to her is truly a compliment. One thing I will cherish for a lifetime, but my work is serious and I am real uh, thorough and I am real through and through. Not as an actress for show. I've been this way all my life. Cece was born a clairvoyant and uh, has the ability to communicate with spirit world unmasked over time. Now, now listen, Cece, first of all, welcome to the X-Zone. It's great having you with us. And um, Cece the Huntress, the queen of the paranormal, the mistress of the unknown, new queen of darkness, and the sexiest ghost hunter on the planet. Which one do you like best? Well, let me just clarify something. The sexiest ghost hunter on the planet was not by my own making. Trust me with this one. I um, have my website app, and I have different. I have a Facebook account and a mm-hmm. MySpace, and somebody posted that. And next thing you know, it just took off. It had legs of its own, and um, that's what they just started calling me. And I guess I don't look like the ordinary ghost hunter. I, I kind of, I like to pretty myself up. I don't mind wearing makeup and a skirt and. Um, you know, stuff like that. I'm more on the feminine side. Mm-hmm. That doesn't mean it detracts any of, uh, you know, my credentials or anything. Sure. It's just that I, I, I like being feminine, and I don't mind showing it. I can't, don't really care for the T-shirts and the hats to cover your face, and uh, yeah. that's it. Hey, I agree with you 100%. Uh, tell Thank me, you. Tell me, Cece, what was the first sign that you were clairvoyant? The first sign that I was clairvoyant... Um, I'm going to have to tell you, I believe it started at birth, and I know you're going to hear this from a lot of psychics and a lot of people in the paranormal field. They'll say that I had it at birth or it was a yeah. you know, death experience. But truly, I actually grew up this way, and my grandmother, um, Polish, uh, we used to call her Babcia, my, mm-hmm. my grandfather, Jaju. Well, Babci used to um, interpret dreams, and she had this ability to, to foretell things. And I honestly could do it the same way she could, and I thought everybody else could, too. I, I didn't realize it until I got older and out of that cocoon of a, you know, the Polish family all wrapped around you, and I realized um, that, no, in, in fact, I was an oddity, and I um, was poked fun at and stuff like that, and I suppressed it for a while, and then I just couldn't suppress it anymore and just said, oh, heck with it, I, I'm original, I'm, I'm myself, and I'm just going to embrace, you know, the gifts that God gave me. Uh, whatever they are. Is it hard being a clairvoyant in today's society, or is it getting a lot easier these days? I think if you're a... um, I'm not really sure how to answer that. I think with all of the the things going on in the paranormal industry, and Mm -hmm. I think we're oversaturated with it, I believe it makes it harder being a clairvoyant trying to make a professional living out of it as far as advertising and, you know, having that market or that branding, because there's so many people out there claiming to be clairvoyant, whether they are or not. I honestly don't know. 
I do know for me it's a little bit different. I do have a branding. I do have a different type of approach and a different type of look. Mm -hmm. And as far as me um, being a clairvoyant in in today's society, uh, people clamor to me instead of um, staying away from the um, oversaturation of, of the business. So I seem to be doing fine and growing leaps and bounds where where others are are failing. So I'm going to have to say it's good for me. All right, stand by, CC. You and I have to take a commercial break. We'll be back uh, shortly. CC Carroll's our special guest, Exxon Nation, www.cc.thehuntress.com. That's the alphabet C, the alphabet C, T H E H U N T R E S S. Dot com. We'll be back on the other side of this commercial break as the Exxon continues from our studios in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. On the Talk Star Radio Network and the Exxon Broadcast Network. Don't go away. This is Kevin Randall. For nearly 30 years, I have been investigating the case of the Roswell UFO. I have interviewed hundreds of people and stood on the crash site. Now in Roswell in the 21st century, I have reviewed dozens of hours of audio and videotaped interviews, examined hundreds of files that relate to the crash, and have returned to Roswell in an attempt to put all that information into the proper perspective. For the first time in Roswell in the 21st century, I have made a dispassionate reevaluation of all that material and provide a new look at what happened. This is a book that clears away all the clutter that has hidden the truth for so long strips away the various lies that surround the case, exposes the Air Force attempts at cover-up, and found a core of solid information that tells us all where the case stands today. Roswell in the 21st Century will be available in just a few weeks. For more information, please visit my website at www.kevinrandall.blogspot.com. Gibbs A. Williams, Ph.D., is a practicing psychoanalyst, supervisor, researcher, and author in New York City. Much of his life has been dedicated to understanding nature and the uses of meaningful coincidences or synchronicities. His radical and original non-Jungian, non-mystical, non-magical theory of synchronicities illuminates much of the fog surrounding this challenging and perplexing topic. His ideas and manners are fresh, presented in a style that is both entertaining and highly informative. He is also an expert on crisis intervention, specially focused on violence reduction for the police and citizens, mastering anxiety, frustration, and stress without the use of medication, and effectively preventing and treating heroin addiction. Dr. Williams can be contacted at his email address at gwwilliamsny11 at aol.com or visit his website at www.drgibbswilliams.com. Shamanism is recognized as a method to access the quantum level. Mastery of shamanic skills puts spiritual information and healing power into your hands. Path Home Shamanic Art School, a bonded Colorado certified occupational school, has met rigorous state standards ensuring its director and instructors have the qualifications to teach the shamanic arts. Path Home offers its certification program in blocks of study. Block 1, a five-day intensive, will be held in the beautiful mountain town of Coldale, Colorado, October 13th through 18th. Registration deadline is September 12th. Experience journey trance, power animals, helping spirits, sacred space, and life purpose. Come discover your power. Join me, Gwilda Wiyaka, in the magical world of shamanism. Call 303-775-3431 or visit findyourpathhome.com. With each new extreme weather event or terrorist act, it becomes increasingly obvious that we live in uncertain and challenging times. We all buy car insurance. Why not collapse and catastrophe insurance? Matthew Stein, an MIT-trained engineer and green builder, has written two outstanding books to help people prepare, plan for, and deal with everything from minor situations lasting a few days to full-on collapse. Matt's first book, When Technology Fails, is a manual for self-reliance, sustainable living, and surviving the long emergency. This massive book covers the gamut from first aid and emergency preparedness to alternative healing, renewable energy, primitive living skills, and 18th century technologies that could be critical to your comfort and survival in a long-lasting crisis. Matt's second book, When Disaster Strikes, is a comprehensive emergency preparedness handbook and survival guide. When Disaster Strikes is an essential item for every family's go-bag, 
Both books are available at all usual sources. There's a wealth of totally free information posted at whentechfails.com, and author signed copies may be purchased at mattstein.com. That's www.whentechfails.com and www.mattstein.com. C.C. Carroll's my special guest this hour, XO Nation. Her website is www.cctheHuntress.com. C.C., how has being able to see parts of the future affected your personal life? Well, I know if my boyfriend's cheating on me, that's for sure. <laughs> 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 they can't get away with a damn thing when they're around me. <laughs> Good for you. I know that. Um I just I have a, a, an intuition about people. I can mm-hmm. I can take a look at them, and you don't want to say size them up, but you you get a feel for maybe what their inner personality or inner spirit is like, and therefore you can kind of judge. Um, it, it's not the old adage you can judge a book by its cover because sometimes you can't do mm-hmm. that. That's but right. for some reason I have an uncanny knack of just looking at you and watching your gestures to know what type of person you may or may not be. Now, now the other thing is this went before. I used to be a police officer in Lawrence, Massachusetts for a few years. Mm-hmm. I graduated um, Northeast Regional Police Institute. And, um, of course, they teach you all that kind of stuff, how sure. to read people, yeah. how to watch their movements, how to this and that. But this ability came uh, long before that. And I, and I do shy away from people. I'm very courteous, but I will shy away from something that I – don't feel it's right. And I bet you, Rob, yourself that, you know, you, you get in a room with somebody and somebody just gives you a bad vibe yeah. and that's your intuition coming into effect right there. Well, you see, I'm, I'm an ex cop too. And, and, cool. and I'll tell you something that the intuition played a big part in, in my policing because I never doubted my intuition. I did when I was a kid, but as I grew up, I learned to trust my gut feelings and, I remember one time, CC, we were we were cruising along the uh, the main road, and it was it was about three o'clock in the morning, and and this car passes us, and and I told my partner, I said, turn the car around, and pull him over. He said, what for? I said, just do it. And then my partner and I had been together for years, so he said, okay, pull the guy over, and I said, you know, got out of the cruiser, and I was talking to him. And I said, well, so what are you doing in town this time of night? He said, now listen to this as a as a lame excuse. Well, I'm an Electrolux salesman, and I'm just scouting out the new territory. And I said, okay. Hmm. I said, well, would you mind if we took a look in your car? He said, no, I'll even open my trunk for you. Okay. Oh, really? So he opens <laughs> his... a dead giveaway. Yeah, he opens his trunk, Cece, and he's got vacuum cleaners in them. And he says, there you go. He's satisfied, officer. I said, do you mind if I take a look inside your vacuum cleaners? He said, why? And that old gut feeling went, ba-doing, 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 ba-doing. Well, to make a long story short, in one vacuum cleaner, we found handguns. and another vacuum cleaner, we found uh, narcotics. You know, it was like, wow. yeah, it's that gut feeling that, you, that you'd that you have, you know, or, or where you'd pull over the car and you'd, you knew that you were getting a snow job because your gut feeling, your intuition was saying, nah, this is all right. wrong. And, and that's something that no one can teach you. You are inherently born with this. And it goes back to when we were like cave people and men were out there, you know, gathering the food and hunting. Women were taking care of their kids and instinctually danger would be all around them and they would know where it was and they would use that intuition to guard off or to hunt or to be competitive, whatever it might have been. But then, you know, over the transition of time and how we've developed, a lot of people seem to go, oh, poo-poo at it. But um, I would have to say the vast majority of people, if, they, um, if they're in their car, they, they'll say, like, I'm not going down that street. Or mm-hmm. I should have went another way. I knew I was going to run into something, and yet there was no reason for it. So the vast majority of people do have an instinct, and they should trust it more. Cece, what's it like communicating with those who have passed? Comforting extremely comforting and and you know yourself when you've had a a loved one pass away or a or a pet and well, wouldn't it be great just to kind of close your eyes yeah. and and maybe maybe smell their scent or or feel them near you or or just look at them again and and this is an ability and i honestly teach people this 
And they ask me, well, how do you see these people? Do you see them like in black and white in color or like a movie going by? And I tell them, I see them exactly the way you do. If, if, if you just think about what your grandparent looked like or what that person or animal looked like and think of all the intricacies of that picture, what does that look like to you? Could you recognize your grandmother? Yes. It's like in technicolor. That's how I see it. As everybody else would see it, that's how I see them. But Cece, how do you turn it on and off? You know, you're you're clairvoyant, you're a medium. My my heavens, you know, if you don't have some way of saying, guys, that's enough, you you'd be inundated with the spirit world seven twenty four three sixty five. Well, you know what? The thing is, not so much inundated. Um, when the spirits contact you, or, or let's say if they contact you or someone else, mm-hmm. or even me, it's for a specific reason. I don't really get inundated. I think, um, I don't know if other psychics do. Some some say they do. I don't know if that's real or not. But um, it's not that I shut it off. It's that I maybe ignore it or I have to work with somebody that I might have a bad intuition about, but I'm forced to have to, you know, sit next to them and work with them and be polite and professional. (laughs) So, yeah, I'll shut it off then. So I I don't want to know anymore, (laughs) you know. And um, but, uh the intuition part come, comes into play a lot with that. And um, did I answer your question okay? Yeah, you certainly did. You certainly did. Um, what makes you different than other ghost hunters? Well, the thing that makes me different than other ghost hunters is, number one, I hunt for the spirit world alone. I don't go with a team of people. Mm-hmm. And I'm not, I'm not going to say that that's bad, and I'm not going to say that that's good. The only thing I can add to that is that I cannot see how people with large teams or teams in general can get the evidence that they get. I can't see a ghost coming out and saying boo when there's a room full of people. Mm -hmm. I like to be intimate and up close with the spirit world. I have one videographer and I do take him and maybe an assistant. That is the maximum. And we also do things that are different. We go places that nobody dares to go and that would be in caves, train tunnels, under homes, uh, looking for the underground railroad, like the safe houses for them, uh, that, is, that house of slaves. And we go on horseback up mountains. We go down ski slopes. We go places that a crew or a team would not be able to go. And we have this filmed, uh, either it's a live investigation or docu-formatted. The other thing that makes me different is um, I don't look like a typical ghost hunter. I actually, you know, I like to be feminine. And yeah. I'm not afraid to wear well, that. That's what, you were sa- and, that's what you were saying before is that, you, you know, you don't go for the T-shirt and the baseball cap. And I, and I, and I admire no, I that. Not. That's great. I have to ask you this. You, you're in the industry. Yes. So many shows on TV. All right. And I, I you know, I, I don't want to name the ones on A&E like Penn State, Psychic Kids and all those other ones because I, I don't believe in promoting them. So I won't say their names. <clears throat> okay. Go ahead. <laughs> You know what? I People say, do you watch those shows, Rob? I say, yeah, I did once. I found them so funny and so farcy, I don't watch them anymore. Mm-hmm. Why do people want to watch a show that is so blatantly phony? Well, because I'm going to tell you, the general public does not know the falseness or the fakeness or the phoniness within those programs. All they know is what what they're told. Now, if you had a paranormal group, a paranormal person with knowledge and education of the paranormal, and they watch it, they pick up on everything. So basically, um, they're not singing to the choir. They're singing to the general public who are not knowledgeable in this field and do not know, and therefore... I'm not going to say they're being duped in some way, but I do not watch those shows yeah, at but, all well, and because I, I try to have an independent thinking product. And, and that, that's what makes me mm-hmm. different as well. And also, I, I always heal the spirits at the end of my quest uh, or my investigation. I hate it when they, they find these ghosts or spirits or whatever, and they tell you, well, you got a ghost, we'll see you next week. Well, okay, you're going to leave me at home with this thing? What are you going to do for me? Yeah. And I like to present a complete product where I not only I use, um, you know, some 
ancient tools like candles, dowsing rods, and things like that because they didn't have electricity 200 years ago. So I use those elements to show people that you can use tools from your own home to find the spirit world. Then I use um, the high-tech stuff that we have because I think people are all into that. And I, I find the spirits, locate them, present a healing based on the his, history of the home and get involved with the spirit. Know a little bit about their background, their spiritual background, what were their beliefs, uh, what happened at that time that I, that I could present a healing that mm-hmm. would be efficient enough to bring some comfort and calm the area down. Then I go back and retest to see if the levels have changed. So my programming is a lot well, it seems that we lost a CCXO Nation. We'll uh, try and hook up with her on the other side of this commercial break. This is what happens when you tick spirits off. And, uh, yeah, my producers are telling me, yes, Rob, we did lose Cece. So we'll uh, grab a hold of her on the other side of this break. This is the Zone, a place where people dare to believe and dare to be heard, Monday through Friday from 10 p.m. Eastern until 2 a.m. Eastern. And um, I, I don't know why that's keep on going. All right, we were able to uh, get uh, figure out what was wrong there. So we're going to uh, take a commercial break here with the news at the bottom of the hour. When we come back, we'll have Cece Carroll back with us. As the Exxon continues from our studios in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. We have found this happens, Exxon Nation, when people are on the show who are very clairvoyant. They have a very strong magnetic uh, charge around them. And most clairvoyants who are legitimate do. So this is one way that we can tell you that CC, Carol, is the real thing. Once again, if you'd like to visit her website, it's www.ccthehuntress.com. That's www.ccthehuntress.com. My name is Rob McConnell. This is The Exxon, and we're coming to you live and around the world from our studios in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. Our toll-free number worldwide, 1-800-610-7035. Email exxon at exxonradiotv.com and our website, www.exxon. It was a terrifying experience. I thought we was going to go to jail for murder. That day, you know, we were a little behind, so we worked until it was starting to get dark. We loaded up the equipment and hadn't driven very far when we caught glimmers of this glow coming through the trees. I urged Mike to hurry up and get up there. Travis had the door open before we even stopped. As he got closer, I heard the sound. One of the guys said, you feel that? I really panicked then. I told him, get the hell out of here. It didn't come directly to me. It came to a, a deputy sheriff. Three of us volunteered right away to tell him what had happened. Sheriff Gillespie definitely didn't believe it. He says that we better be certain because we're getting a lot of trouble. When we went to search the next day, they split us up, and the whole time the deputies asked me, you know, if you just tell us where the body is, we can all go home and get this over with. We're talking about a hundred people combing through the wooded area. Nothing turns up. All week long, I've been hearing they're going to set it up to make you guys look guilty. We're a rough-looking bunch, then. Some of us have been in trouble with the law before. And y'all ain't never going to come out of that jailhouse. We couldn't get out. I tried to sneak out the back door the day of the polygraph test. I was scared to death. And on top of that, you have media. I literally would be on two telephones at the same time. We even got some coops in here now that's coming in and out to see the freak show, as they call it. Everyone dissents. I just wasn't going to stand there and to it anymore. Granny says, this is Travis. I'm back. I need help. When I did hear that he had been returned, it was almost as unbelievable as the original thing. I just looked at my mom and says, I told you we didn't kill him. Travis Walton reappeared after several days with a bizarre story about a ride in an unidentified flying object. People were desperate to explain it away. Why are you sticking up with Travis for all this time? You know this really didn't happen. What happened to Travis after we took off in that truck, I can't tell you. I hated Travis for a long time after this. My whole world just tore up. But I believe every word Travis said about it. He's never lied to me about nothing. 
It's a net negative. We lost our jobs in the immediate aftermath. And now you're not able to talk about it with anyone because you know that they're going to laugh at you, they're going to look at you like you're crazy. But if you don't come out and tell your story, somebody else is going to tell it for you. There's a degree of responsibility. Uh, certainly I have to accept the bad. If I can direct what's happened in a way that I can make something good happen in the world, I'm looking for it. Order your copy of Travis, the true story of Travis Walton, today at www.travaswaltonthemovie.com. Did you know that when you're on the road with limited data or Wi-Fi, you can still listen to the Exxon Radio Show with Rob McConnell, The Science of Magic with Gwilda Wiaka, High Tech with Corey Kay, and every minute of the 24-7, 365 programming of the Exxon Broadcast Network by calling 712-432-9459, courtesy of TalkStream Live. No smartphone, app, or internet needed. It saves your data plan, and it's free if you have unlimited minutes. Call 712-432-9459 to listen on any phone, anytime, anywhere. Remember, 712-432-9459 for the best of paranormal, new age, thought-provoking, sci-fi radio programming 24-7, 365. Wouldn't you love to know the secret to everything? Well then, meet Dr. Kimberly McGeorge and her cutting-edge breakthrough knowledge that combines science with possibility. Dr. Kimberly brings real-life answers and healing to those open to alternative solutions. She teaches solution-based programs and classes that will change all areas of your life forever. Specializing in conscious creation, intuitive readings, and energy medicine, you can rapidly shift health, relationships, business, and money and abundance challenges quickly. Receive her best-selling book, Secret to Everything, at no cost by going to secrettoeverything.com forward slash X zone. That's right. Transformation can start now. Just go to secrettoeverything.com forward slash X zone and receive Dr. Kimberly's book for free. While science pursues fact, magic accesses the quantum level, bridging random facts to form truth. As long as science and magic remain separate and polarized, the truth cannot be known. I'm Gwilda Wiecka. Join me on the Science of Magic radio program, dedicated to unification and evolution of consciousness. During each episode, I'll be speaking with experienced and respected scientists and mystics. From astrologers to astronomers, from medical doctors to shaman, the scientific method to dowsing and intuition will weave together information from seemingly divergent practices to promote unity and enlightenment. Join me, Gwilda Wiyaka, and the Science of Magic right here on the Mutual Broadcast Network. For more information, visit www.thescienceofmagic.net. I am Dr. Carl O'Helvey, founder, president of a new cancer foundation focusing on evidence-based physical, mental, and spiritual interventions, including natural cancer cures, prayer, meditation, affirmations, nutrition, and other related holistic cancer prevention and cure modalities. These are used in cancer education, research, and financing care. I ask for your help to continue this important work by donating at www.holisticcancerfoundation.com. C.C. Carroll is back with us. I told you, Exo Nation, when you get a powerful clairvoyant on or someone who has a strong electromagnetic personality like uh, C.C. does, 
these things do happen. Her website is www.cctheheuntress.com. Welcome back, CC. And I was wondering if you could tell us about your book, Ghosts and Legends of the Merrimack Valley. Yes, I can. And boy, I'd love to. History Press contacted me, and I was so honored that they asked me to write a book for their Haunted, um, called the Haunted America series. Mm-hmm. And the reason they asked me, out of all the people out here, like I said, it's a highly competitive industry, is because I do stick to the historical facts and documentation when it comes to presenting my paranormal, my paranormal television shows or the events that I conduct. I stay based in factual history, science, and spirituality, and I don't mm-hmm. deviate. And so they were thinking of somebody and looking at sites and looking at people and looking at information and thought I would fit the bill and swung a contract my way, which is very nice. And so I got paid to write the book. And so it's called Ghosts and Legends of the Merrimack Valley. And the Merrimack Valley, which they didn't realize at that time, they thought it was a small little regional area. It's not. It's it's it encompasses two complete states from the white mountains of New Hampshire all the way down to uh, the ocean in Massachusetts. And what I wrote about was the inception of the Merrimack Valley with the factual history that goes with it and the paranormal undertones of rumors and legends and brought that all to fruition in a nice, a nice book. And you can get it at my website, cctheheuntress.com. Or you can go to Amazon or Borders Books or, or anywhere um, like that. But if you order it through me, you'll probably get it quicker than you would be doing because I usually send it out turnarounds the same day. But the, the book is filled with um, businesses. I tried to stay where we could promote local commerce, mm-hmm. places you could actually go and visit, like Canopy Lake Hall, the dance hall theater. Canopy Lake Hall is um, a Canopy Lake amusement park. is one of the oldest amusement parks in the United States. So they have uh, they had Sonny and Cher in there, and they had all these people, and those pictures are inside the book. And I did not put in a place that you could not visit. Um, I, I don't like it when someone writes a book and says, well, it's a private residence. I can't tell you where it's located. As far as I'm concerned, I could have written that in my living room. Yeah, I could have exactly. made the whole thing up. Yeah. You know? I'm serious. So what I wanted to do was so people could go and and have commerce with other individuals. I'm a big promoter of charities and and just kind of, um, you know, promoting everybody and cross-promoting. I think it's very important that we all support ourselves in small industries like this. And so the book is is just filled with with tales from the inception of the Merrimack Valley uh, to present day with the paranormal in it. We have Indian tales and legends and factual experiences. We have tidbits of historical information where the river itself actually took a straight route from the White Mountains right down to Boston Harbor. But when the glaciers receded, Mm -hmm. that created a barrier and made the river turn a sharp left at Lowell, Massachusetts. And a lot of people don't know that. They thought that that was the formation of the river, but it's not. I took it way, way back, you know, and then brought it forward. And um, I even get a kick out of reading it. Like, I'll go back and read it again going, well, I really like that part, you know. <laughs> so, I know it sounds crazy, but, but I do. And m- my kids were instrumental in taking the photographs in the book, and um, and that was just great. We made it a nice family event. And um, I hope people who are interested in history uh, like to read it. It's it's not a, like a big techie book or heavy-worded book. It, it's me within the pages, the way I speak, the way I talk, the way people know me. Uh, they'll get to know me a lot better through the reading of uh, the book. Tell me, Cece, where are some of the most haunted places in the Merrimack Valley? Well, I'm going to have to say, people ask me this all the time, where was the scariest place? Yeah. And it, it is a little-known restaurant called Tortilla Flats. It's not a franchise. They have a franchise by that name out in Florida, but this is called Tortilla Flats. It's in Merrimack, New Hampshire. Mm-hmm. And it was one of the first times I had an experience where I could not walk into the room. Wow. There was a room upstairs. The house was built in 1756. And it was part of the Underground Railroad in time. Mm-hmm. And we did a live investigation. We had the cameras on. We got the Wi-Fi going. And we're up, up on the up, upper floors where no one's allowed because they've closed it down. And there was one particular room where I just, I kept feeling something bouncing off of my shoulders as I was coming up the stairs and into the room. And I'm up, and you can see me on the video, I'm shushing it all away. And right. I went into the room and 
just turned around and left. And I tell the videographer, I, I'm not going back in. If you want to go in there and take some footage, go ahead. But when something tells you to stay the heck out of there, um, well, I want to listen to them. <laughs> That's for sure. And, and just like, you know, you get a, a funny feeling, and I'm sure some of the um, the listeners get a funny feeling. Like, I'm not going in that room, or I, I don't want to go down that hallway, or I don't want to do something. Don't do it. If it's that strong of intuition, don't do it. And, and I didn't do it, and it just creeped me out so much. And I'm not like other television shows where they run in fear or anything like that. I really don't get scared that often. But this just unnerved me uh, a lot. And so I tell that experience and people go there and eat and they'll go, oh, this place, it feels haunted. The whole place feels almost surreal when you walk in the door. It's a lot of uh, energy uh, going back and forth in there. I've been to adventurous places like the Hoosack Tunnel, which is a five-mile train tunnel, through uh, the Hoosick Mountain I spoke slightly different than the Hoosack uh, Tunnel. And I walked the entire five miles, uh, went to the two-and-a-half-mile uh, marker. Mm -hmm. They have a, a place called a Center Shaft. Also right next to that, they got a place called a Hoosack Hotel, which was a little way area where people would rest if they walked, and performed a healing there and left. Um, that, was, that was probably the most dangerous shoot we ever did because – Pan Am Rail Services said that gave us a specific time to go in. There'll be no trains going by, and lo and behold, there were two freight trains Holy cow. came by, and they were going. They were going fast. You could get out of the way. It was no joke. And I said, "This is just not real." So when I we contacted the the rail service, like what what's going on? They said, "No, there were no trains to sch scheduled. No trains went through there." And I'm like, "I got it on tape." <laughs> so it was quite bizarre, but. Um, Getting back to um, Tortilla Flats, I'd have to say that's probably the scariest place here that I have ever found. T tell me, Cece, do you think there are people that fake paranormal events just to get noticed? Excuse me, I, I didn't hear you. Uh, I, paranormal I, I, events to just get noticed? Yes. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I know uh, several groups, and, and in fact, um, I was part of a group that I don't even want to say where we were because I don't know who they are. And we went into this place for a charity, and I did it. Uh, as long as the proceeds were going 100% to the charity, I'll do it for free. Just give me a little bit to eat and some gas money. I'm all set, you know. And uh, I went there and did it, and they've got, like, I like to call it the dog and pony show going in one of the rooms. And they have the EMS meters going off, and they're talking to it, and they're all this stuff. And I'm thinking, something's wrong with this. Right away, I knew it. Mm -hmm. And But the general public did not know it because they're not experienced or educated in the terminology or the field or the scientific instruments. And I looked at the historian that was there, and I said, could you take me in the basement? And he did. And I went directly under the room and found a big electrical box. I said, there's your ghost. Unreal. And that was it. So I go back upstairs, and the guys are like, well, where were you? I said, in the basement directly under this floor. And their eyes got so big, like, are you going to rat us out now or what? And I, I let it go. And um, But those are the types of, of people that hadn't it been for a charitable cause as, as significant as it was, I would have ratted them out in a heartbeat. But um, it, the money went to a great cause. It was a little bit different. People were so enjoying themselves, so that's different. And there's also groups that, you know, we find up here, um, not here, but in in New England in general, where one might pretend they're possessed by a devil and another one might have to throw themselves on top of them to get the devil out. And you're like, you do this every night? <laughs> to get tired of this stuff? <laughs> I don't know. But, you know, I, I just kind of laugh and it's like, mm -hmm. God, I hope the same people don't come twice to your event because look what's going to happen. But slow, slowly but surely, um, these people do get weeded out because they are um, they're fakers, you know, and that's that's not right, and that's hurting a lot of other people who have very good intentions um, to do things. I, I don't just go into an event to um, to like whip up ghosts or go on a ghost hunt. I try to go in, and I always have a theme. Uh, we're having a, a theme called the Exorcist event, March 18th at a seafood restaurant here in um, Bedford, New Hampshire, called the Weather Vane. It's, it's a nationally recognized chain, and they're allowing me to come in. Now, the Exorcist event consists of never-seen-before footage of the actual interview of Father Gallagher back in 1974. 
Now, these clips are going to be combined with The Exorcist movie to go back and forth to show where the mm -hmm. accuracies were in those uh, exorcisms that were performed. Now, Father Gallagher performed a few of those exorcisms that led to the book, that led to the movie with Linda Blair. Yeah. That's who Father Gallagher is, so if the um, listeners didn't know that. And so that's what we're doing. Not only that, we're having a representative from the clergy come in, and he's going to tell us exactly what an exorcism is. And then I'm going to give a paranormal demonstration. And then if they want, we can just hunt within the restaurant because it's, it's housed in a, a building that's 101 years old, an old home. So it's going to be a fascinating evening, but I always try to bring an educational aspect to everything that I do. So people will leave with a knowledge of the paranormal, but a factual knowledge, not something conjured into your brain to scare you and send you home hiding under the blankets. I like to try to educate and let people understand that, hey, the paranormal is 98% in your head. Mm -hmm. You're making it all up. You know, really, it, it is true. Uh, it's the 2% that I look for of the total unknown. And what that's it, what makes it really scary. Cece, what's your take about the Amityville case? Well, my take is I, um, I think entertainment value, it is awesome. Absolutely great for entertainment value. Mm -hmm. But from a professional onset, I think there are a lot of discrepancies that need to be cleared up. And um, that would be some, that would be a really nice place. I would love to go down there and, uh, you know, and just pull the history, pull the facts, go back and forth with, you know, things change so much uh, when they start presenting the entertainment value of it. Like getting back to the exorcist, that was a case there were four different exorcisms performed in a period of time. And then they wrote the book and then they made the movie and they, they turned this Linda Blair into a girl. Well, obviously she's a girl, but the actual prominent victim was a 14 year old boy, not a girl. And so there's a lot of discrepancies when you come to the entertainment value of things. So it would be nice to get back to the facts. So, so, I, so think, I think there are discrepancies. So the exorcist in, in reality was more of a um, poltergeist activity than it was demonic possession. Uh, well, you know what? I'm, I'm just going to give a, a little bit of a tidbit of, of some of the footage that, that I saw okay. with the interview, and we're working on it. Um, they actually felt it was not a possession by the devil or a demon. It may have been a disciple of hmm. the devil like that, but they don't feel it was 100% a demonic possession. Now, you've got to remember that spirits themselves can be really nasty, yep. because when you die, you assume the personality that you had when you were living. So if, if you were a jokester, or you are funny, or you were yeah, humorous, that's what you're going to be. Now, if you were all a woman who wasn't quite nice, that's probably what you're going to be. And some spirits are just plain mean, nasty, horrible human beings, and that's what they are in death. And that's what they believe might have been devil-like, but not demonic. Because now, now we're dealing with devils which are unhuman. They're unhuman spirits. They were never alive as a human being to cross over to be like a ghost or a spirit. These are inhuman. Same thing with angels. They're inhuman. A whole, whole different realm right there. But that doesn't mean that a, a very bad uh, ghost or spirit doesn't have devil-like qualities, and they need to be treated in the same manner. So there's a discrepancy in that particular thing. Father Gallagher talks a lot about, and that's what I'll be presenting, where they honestly felt that it really was not a demonic possession. But yet, through entertainment and all this stuff, the actual facts get so marred, you don't really know what's going on. So it's fun to, to have these events to educate people that, hey, look what really happened. Look what they did to it. And yeah. find the accuracies and, uh, and the differences between the two. Cece, you and I have to take our final break. Uh, when we come back, okay. Cece and I will uh, do a wrap-up and we'll also uh, take a look at the show that was today. So that's uh, coming up after this commercial break. Exonation. C.C. Carroll is our special guest this hour. Her website is www.cctheHuntress.com. That's alphabet C, alphabet C, thehuntress.com. My name's Rob McConnell. This is the Exxon on the Talkstar Radio Network and the Exxon Broadcast Network. We'll be back on the other side of this break with 
the one and only C.C. Carroll as we continue from our studios in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. Don't go away, we'll be back. Wouldn't you love to know the secret to everything? Well then, meet Dr. Kimberly McGeorge and her cutting-edge breakthrough knowledge that combines science with possibility. Dr. Kimberly brings real-life answers and healing to those open to alternative solutions. She teaches solution-based programs and classes that will change all areas of your life forever. Specializing in conscious creation, intuitive readings, and energy medicine, you can rapidly shift health, relationships, business, and money and abundance challenges quickly. Receive her best-selling book, Secret to Everything, at no cost by going to secrettoeverything.com forward slash X zone. That's right. Transformation can start now. Just go to secrettoeverything.com forward slash X zone and receive Dr. Kimberly's book for free. Did you know that when you're on the road with limited data or Wi-Fi, you can still listen to the Exxon Radio Show with Rob McConnell, The Science of Magic with Gwilda Wiaka, High Tech with Corey Kay, and every minute of the 24-7, 365 programming of the Exxon Broadcast Network by calling 712-432-9459, courtesy of TalkStream Live. No smartphone, app, or internet needed. It saves your data plan, and it's free if you have unlimited minutes. Call 712-432-9459 to listen on any phone, anytime, anywhere. Remember, 712-432-9459 for the best of paranormal, new age, thought-provoking, sci-fi radio programming 24-7, 365. Coming soon to the Exxon Broadcast Network is a different perspective with me, Kevin Randall, as your host. We'll be taking a close look at what is happening in the world of UFOs today with side trips into the paranormal. Guests will range from those who are household names to those who have a different perspective on a variety of topics. No topic will be taboo, but there will be tough questions asked as we all search for the truth about UFOs, the paranormal, and those things that excite us. Sometimes we'll agree with a guest and sometimes we won't, but we'll try to keep the program topical. For those of you who would like to read, be sure to visit www.kevinrandall.blogspot.com and remember to listen to the other fine programs on the X-Zone Broadcast Network at www.xzbn.net. This is Kevin Randall. For nearly 30 years, I have been investigating the case of the Roswell UFO. I have interviewed hundreds of people and stood on the crash site. Now in Roswell in the 21st century, I have reviewed dozens of hours of audio and videotaped interviews, examined hundreds of files that relate to the crash, and have returned to Roswell in an attempt to put all that information into the proper perspective. For the first time in Roswell in the 21st century, I have made a dispassionate reevaluation of all that material and provide a new look at what happened. This is a book that clears away all the clutter that has hidden the truth for so long, strips away the various lies that surround the case, exposes the Air Force attempts at cover-up, and found a core of solid information that tells us all where the case stands today. Roswell in the 21st Century will be available in just a few weeks. For more information, please visit my website at www.kevinrandall.blogspot.com. What happened in Benghazi is revealed by Nicholas Genix, author of Obama, Islam, and Benghazi. He informs the American people that President Obama deceived them by advocating a strong foreign policy prior to the 2012 presidential election, and Hillary Clinton supported this deception. 
As the title infers, there is a connection between Obama, Islam, and Benghazi. Ample evidence informs Americans that Obama's early indoctrination in the Quran developed an infinity for Islam, why the Quran is the source of discontent in many countries, and why the Obama foreign policy deception led to poor military action and caused the loss of American lives in Benghazi. Genex provides 36 questions for the Select Committee on Benghazi to validate if Americans are justified to mistrust President Obama and Hillary Clinton. An overview of Obama, Islam, and Benghazi is presented on the website www.futureofgodamen.com. That's www.futureofgodamen.com. Afterlife expert Roberta Grimes was the first one to say that dying can be fun. Now her best-selling book, The Fun of Dying, is available in stores worldwide. So if you wonder whether death ends life, how it feels to die, or what heaven might be like, The Fun of Dying was written for you. And if you have always been afraid of death, or if you worry that your life has no meaning, let The Fun of Dying ease your fears and bring new meaning to your life. Nothing said in The Fun of Dying is based on the teachings of any religion. Instead, Roberta draws on evidence to explain how death happens, how it feels, and what comes next. A lot of the best death-related evidence was produced in the first half of the 20th century. When it is put together with recent discoveries, it tells a consistent and amazing story. Roberta Grimes blogs and answers questions at robertagrimes.com. Her wonderful book, The Fun of Dying, is available on Amazon and at stores worldwide wherever books are sold. And welcome back to the Exxon, everyone. I'd like to take this opportunity of thanking all our guests tonight. We started off with Dr. Shaw. Hour number two, Chris Schweitzer and I talked about parallel universes. Nora Novak and I discussed uh, art damaged in hour number three. And my final guest tonight is C.C. Carroll. And uh, her website is www.cctheheuntress.com. C.C., uh, how can our listeners know whether or not the, the help that they're seeking because I you know people uh, watch TV shows now and they, they they see these crazy things happening and they say oh my gosh maybe my house is haunted how can the listeners know who to go to and what should they, what should they look for in in somebody that they're looking to help them with a paranormal problem that they believe they have I would, if they have a website, look at the website, see if they have any testimonies. Maybe you can contact a few of the people that, that have spoken to these mm-hmm. psychics. Um, there, there's also, you can go to, I know in the United States, there's a Better Business Bureau. and some places, a psychic has to be licensed, so you can look into that as well. Also, first and foremost, use your gut intuition. You can tell just by hearing their voice or meeting them if they're feeding you a line of um, bull. And when you do meet with one uh, face-to-face, watch their eyes. Are they looking at you or are they looking away from you and looking all over the place? You know, it's important that they look, you know, straight at you because people that are lying look all over the place because they're looking for answers. They should know the answers and they should look directly at you. So use your instinct. If they're giving you ambivalent answers and just vague things that anybody could say, then probably that's not a good psychic. But if she's giving you intricate detail or telling you things that nobody else knows but you, then, of course, that would be somebody that you'd want to stick with. So those would be the guidelines. CC, this hour has gone by so fast. I want to thank you so much for joining us. It's been a hey, great pleasure talk, talking to you. Let our listeners know how they can find out more about you and where they can buy your book and give them your website. They can uh, visit uh, cctheheuntress.com. And I just want to do a, one quick little shout out that sure. we have a band called the Paranormal Rock Stars. Ooh. If you go to the group pages on Facebook, The Paranormal Rock Stars, where uh, I teamed up with some of the guys from the Sci-Fi Channel. We're mm-hmm. having our first concert June 10th, and it will be televised. That's something to look, look into. We're all going to be singing and dancing. All right, Cece, you take care of yourself. Great talking to you, and I look forward to the Thank next you so time much, you Rob. and I meet here in the X Zone. Awesome. Bye-bye. Bye-bye now. Cece Carroll has been our guest of this hour. Her website, www.cecethehuntress.com. Well, that's it for tonight, everyone. I want to thank my production staff here at the Exxon Radio and TV Show and to all our affiliates across Canada, the United States, Central America, the Caribbean, South America, the Pacific Rim, Asia, Africa, and Europe. 
thank you for allowing us to be part of your day or night, no matter where you are in this great big world of ours. As I say as often as I can, if you have a child at home, give them a hug, give them a kiss, let them know they are loved because the children of today are the leaders of tomorrow. So until tomorrow night, my friends, just remember one very simple thing. Take care of each other and always keep your eyes to the sky and your heart to the